Hi Flosstube, I'm Lori Shikalone and welcome to Once Upon a Stitch. Today is Monday, February 15th. It's President's Day. Uh, a lot of schools are closed today in celebration of President's Day. And I hope everybody had a great Valentine's Day yesterday. Ours was very low key. It was just Sal and I. So um, we made a special dinner and um, had some wine, which I don't usually have. And uh, we have a lovely time. And I hope you did as well. Okay, let's get into this. Thank you so much for coming back and joining me in my videos. And anybody new here, I will um, try and talk about things that questions come up as new people start um, watching me. Uh, somebody asked me again about my project bags. I get them at, I got them at Amazon. Um, at the time I bought them, they were 10 for $9.99, and I believe they're up to $16.99 right now. And they're just a vinyl zippered pouch, and I believe they were 11 by 15, or 11 and a half by 15, something like that. So that was one of the questions. Somebody had a question on um, the Buckleberry sampler, so I pulled it out. Oh, I just remembered I didn't pull the chair over with all my whips. Uh, this was the Buckleberry by um, Rosewood Manor. And they had questions about the floss, the fabric, um, and I thought I had said it, but just in case, this is a 28 count ivory Lugana. It's stitched uh, two over two with DMC, the call for DMC. And she asked me what size fabric I this was. So I came up here and I measured and it's um, 18 by 31. I can see it's long, but um, I figured it out again this morning, and um, it's going to be finished by 11 by 24, the finished stitch size itself. So I did not work on this uh, the last time, but I just wanted to pull it out because um, a viewer had questions on that one. The other thing I wanted to say was, there are people that watch my channel that make floss tube that I didn't know they made floss tube. So if you have a floss tube channel, let me know because I'd like to come and see what you're stitching on. And it all started with Patty Smith. Um, we were chatting back and forth and Patty said that she was, um, she had made a floss tube. So I went to try and find her channel. And when I put in Patty Smith, I get a rock star. Not that Patty is not a rock star in her own right, but um, I couldn't come up with her videos. So I was wondering how I can possibly do that. So it dawned on me, if you go to somebody's comment and they have um, a picture or their, their sign or anything, that circle that's them, if you click on that, it will bring up their YouTube channel. And if they make videos, um, you can see them all there. So that's how I ended up finding um, Patty. So um, I'll, I'll write down there three that I found out since my last video that watched me that I didn't know um, made videos. And I went and watched them and I was very pleasantly surprised. Not surprised. I was pleasantly entertained <laughs> and liked seeing what they were stitching on. The other one was um, actually the person who won the giveaway last uh, time was Sprinklestein Stitches. Her name is Amy, and she also makes floss, uh, floss tubes. And um, Sprinklestein is spelled with the S-T-E-E-N because she's an avid Bruce Springsteen fan. So, um, and then the third person was the Patchy Pony, and that's Mel. And I, I watched her um, her video, and I believe she said she lived in Tasmania. And um, I haven't been to Tasmania. I've been to Australia, but never made it to the island of Tasmania. But um, she was lovely, and it reminded me that last time I made the video, we were in the middle of a snowstorm. We ended up getting 17 inches here. I know a lot of people got a lot more in other areas, um, but our relatives in Australia Australia were um, messaging with my husband and my husband was taking pictures as the storm was uh, coming through and sending them pictures because where they come from they don't really have snow 
Um, maybe it'll flurry. I don't even know if it does that, but um, they don't have snow where they live, per se, in Melbourne. So that was that was fun to see their reaction to it. We had some relatives visit us um, over like a Christmas vacation a couple of years ago, and we had snow, and they were so excited to go out there and shovel, and my husband's like, please help. <laughs> so it was nice and um, brings back memories. All right, uh, let's get to it. I'm going to start with, oh, I want to show um, share with you two things that friends sent me. Uh, my friend Dee, hi Dee, she sent me some charms in uh, three different colors. I don't know if you want to say colors, finishes, like a rose gold, a gold, and uh, an antique gold. And they're the year 2021 so that I can put them on the back of my ornaments, especially that my gift ornaments that um, I'd like people to remember um, when I stitched it for them. And then my good friend Helen, um, she's my stitching buddy, she sent me a, a sample of Floche. Um, it's a DMC thread. Um, this is in color 5200 and if I remember, you're, you can use one strand of Floche to equals two strands of uh, regular DMC. So I'm going to give that a try and see how I like it. But I have to come up with a, with, um, a pattern that um, I don't want to just try it on a piece of fabric. I want to actually use it in a pattern. So I have to come up and find a pattern in my staff for that. So I'm excited to try that. Okay, and then I had some finishes. So... Um, these were previous finishes that I FFO'd, and the first one is sat, Scattered Seeds Samplings. <laughs> I forgot what time it is. Let's see. It's, can it, am I, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning, and already I'm having trouble with my words. Um, let's see. This one is Spring Gathering, and this one is no Spring Delivery, Spring Gathering gathering eggs the chicks are born in the spring and I finished them as two pillows and I was looking to possibly uh, frame them and then hang them together but I stitched them you know they're looking at each other I stitched them too close on the fabric and I didn't have too much room to lace them so the next best thing was to um, finish them as pillows and I stitched them up on the bottom, but then I um, I stitched rickrack all around it. And the way I stitch the rickrack is I go up and down in each of the bumps, waves, um, in, in a matching thread so that it, it's not visible. Unless you're really looking for it, of course. But um, that was... Um, my finishes one two three and ABC um, I'm what I'm trying to do now is go back into my finishes and try to fully finish them since a lot of my projects projects are um, large and it's going to take me a while to finish them so it'll give me time to finish what's in my stash of finished <laughs> then the next one I showed you this finish um, in January was lovebirds tree by Just Nan Stitches, and I put it in this frame that I got in the thrift store for $1.99, and I grabbed it this morning. It was downstairs with all my Valentine's and um, February um, stitching to show you. So I'm really happy with the way that came out. And what I did with, with this one to finish it, I put it on a piece of sticky board and I used sticky tape. I forget what the actual taping is called, but the tape that you finish your stitching with, acid-free, double-sided um, mounting tape, mounting tape, on two of the sides, and then the other two sides I laced to um, pull it a little bit tauter so that the corners um, were better down, you know, like pushed down in the corners. So that is my other one. Um, this was a new start and a finish this month. Um, the previous one I did was Heart and Hand Bluebird, and that was done in 2020. This is the Redbird Sampler by Heart and Hand, 
and um, I started it and finished it in my two, do two day rotation. And instead of doing um, two different fabrics as they shown on theirs, I used one and then I lowered the rickrack on it uh, so that it would show um, and it wouldn't contrast with the beige of the, um, the background of this fabric. And this was stitched on a 28 count ivory, Lugana. And that's the back. And this was the back of this one. So uh, those were my finishes this month. Okay, I'm gonna have to scoot over the chair. So excuse me a moment. I usually do this prior to starting to tape because my table's not large enough to have everything on top of it. Okay, so I had another, um, uh, this is the pattern for the heart and hand. And what I thought was a great idea, if I remember every month, is to give you stitch counts. Um, the stitch count for the this pattern is 100 by 40. And the reason I thought that would be um, good was because, okay, 100 by 40. I was watching floss tube and somebody was showing a pillow. Now they may be stitching on 40 count. So it's going to be a lot smaller, but because I stitch, if I, if it's on an even weave, I stitch on 28 count. If it's Ada, I can stitch from 18 to 14 that I, that I have stitched. So sometimes you want to know the size because I remember I picked a pattern, this is going back like two years, and it was, um, I think it was Brenda Gervais, Gervais uh, Think Spring. And in the picture, it looked really small. And then as a, a newer stitcher, I just started stitching it. And it ended up being really large for what I had intended to. And what I had intended to was, give it as an exchange at the, re the first retreat that I went on, but it was too large. So I think, I don't know, I don't know, are you interested in knowing stitch counts? Because if you are, um, I'll try to remember to tell them to you. Okay, so the second um, new start that I had was a Blackbird, and it was a Strawberry Fields Forever. This is on the Magical Mystery Tour of the Beatles and what's falling out is my copy um, because that was one thing I wanted to share. People have asked um, about the Potoki stand and I have been using it and I enjoy using it. The only, I don't know if it's a drawback for me, but I don't have a clip that I can put my pattern in front of like right at me and I find that if I didn't enlarge the pattern or if the pattern's not large enough that I can see easily, I have to put it on my stitching because the way the bar, I should have brought it up, the bar that holds the Q-snap, it's a distance to where I have my pattern. And being that I don't have 20-20 vision anymore, um, I have a hard time seeing. So I make a copy and I put it on my stitching area to the side so that I can see better and stitch. That's the, um, and that's just me because I don't have a clip yet. Well, maybe at uh, next time I go to Needleworkers, I know they sell them. There's a clip that holds your pattern. And um, then I'd have to make copies because I'd hate to um, ruin my original. Anyway, back to uh, Strawberry Fields. I stitched this. This is a 95 by 138. So I'm stitching this on 28 count Country Mocha Lugana. And I, now my goal originally, having a morning, was um, the top border, or was it the top or just the bottom? I think it was this border and Oh, I'm off camera, I'm sorry. My goal was the side border and the stone wall. 
but you can see I made um, more progress in the two days than that and since I'll be stitching it um, you know this year I decided that the next goal I'll have is to or for the year I don't know how you know how things will go but it'll be to finish the border and the bottom stone wall and gate there's a, a gate right there so to come all the way around and do the gate and the other uh, side of the stone wall and um, so I'm enjoying this one and I don't think I'll finish it this year but it would have been nice because then I would like to do uh, Blackbird which is in um, a song by Paul McCartney that was part of the um, series okay what was the third one I have them a little bit out of order I guess this is, it. This is the next one next one I stitched was Liberty's Welcome by Plum Street Samplers. And let's see, the stitch count is 349 by 211. And I'm stitching it on a 28 count Ivory Lugana. Now, I changed the fabric. This is um, Heritage, I believe. Yes, Heritage. I changed the fabric. I wasn't happy with the ivory for this. And um, so I, I changed it to Heritage. And this is where I've gotten on. So it's going to be a large piece because I am stitching it on 28 count. And I believe my goal for the year on this is the top border and left side so I did not finish the top border I believe there's another five or six flowers that go across and then it's going to be down the side border so if I get that accomplished if I get more accomplished great but the goal is to at least get um, that much accomplished for the year I guess these are goals that I'd like to say that I, I want to get see progress on. If I get more, if I have uh, more time, more months to stitch on it and I go further, awesome. I get to finish them sooner. Um, the next one was Joan Elliott's Snowman, Joyful Snowman Stocking. And I would like to finish this this year. Uh, the stitch count is 138 by 217 and I'm doing this on a 28 count white Lugana in the call for um, DMC and I didn't get much done um, I can tell the difference on the days that I watch Caleb that those nights I don't get too much stitching um, but I what I did do was basically half of the gift box that was it this time So I'm hoping for a finish, I have to chart his name at the top, Caleb's name at the top. And, okay. Okay. We change our minds all the time. I had said that in the Little House series, the next one I was going to stitch was the schoolhouse. But I decided that I wanted to stitch the church first and then the schoolhouse. So um, I stitched the church minus, was it Krench? Krench? Um, I left this out and the trees there because the schoolhouse kind of starts with trees. So um, I decided to leave that out for now. Well, I guess leave it out because I can't put it in later. And I finished the church. And I started a little bit of the schoolhouse. There's the church. Now, when I hold this up like this, I notice like there's a, a space in here. And I had gone back to Country Stitcher's very first 
video where Deb did her first one um, like this with all the houses and buildings in a row. And what I liked about it was she set back here some snow and a, a smaller tree as if it was in the distance. So I'm going to try, when it's all done, I'm going to see um, where I'm going to put some snowflakes and and where I, and try putting a tree or two in that section at a distance. So the next time I pick it up, I hope to get the schoolhouse complete. And then after the schoolhouse is grandma's house. And, and I'd like to get that completed by the end of the day, the end of the year. <laughs> if, if only we could say, oh, I'll get it done by the end of the day. Okay, then I picked up the Primitive Hair by Bethana, and this is stitched on an 18 count, excuse me, one of my flosses flew out of the bag. If, the, if there's not many floss, um, call for floss, I keep it in the project bag. And if there's a lot now, I also keep it in the project bag, but I put it in a box when I'm using it in numerical order or alphabetical order. And um, I'm call, using all the call for DMC on this. And the stitch count is 113 wide by 135 high. And what I, I got accomplished was her apron and the start of her dress here. And this was on um, the other two, the other days that I had Caleb. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, which is fine because I enjoy my time with my grandson. Because before long, he's going to be in nursery school, and I won't get to see him as often as I like. Okay, the last one that I worked on for this video was Anniversaries of the Heart, and I'm doing them individually. This stitch count is 75 by 85, and I'm stitching it on a 28 count clay Lugana, and this is my progress so far. And I don't know if you can see on camera. Let's see if I can put. There are some eyelet stitches in the roof. So I was pleasantly surprised that they came out pretty well. Um, what I noticed after um, I worked on, I did that much and I was putting it away. And then I looked at the picture because, you know, you're looking at the chart was that the used brick that's called for didn't have much variegation at all compared to the picture i would have liked a little bit more variegation in it and i i did one stitch at a time and there might be very subtle um, variegation but but i can't i'm not going to change it now i'm not going to pull anything out um, this block i have nobody in my family um, that I can put their initials or names in it. And so I'm going to just leave it as a Valentine's um, month. That was, that was one of the reasons I think I didn't do it on a full, full piece of fabric is because um, I didn't have somebody for, or an anniversary or anything in certain months. So um, I decided to do them individually. And if I had people's names or, or anniversaries that I can put in, birthdays, um, then I would. But on the other ones, I'll just leave plain. I'm noticing that my um, age pewter is coming out. Um, I do not, haven't been to a, um, a beauty salon in a while, but I do do my own coloring because I just open a thing and put it on. But um, I decided to wait so that I can do it right before Easter again. And uh, that's it. Okay, I have a little bit of floss that, a floss, 
haul. I have a little bit of haul to share with you and then we'll um, close it up. I went to the Hallmark card store and this was, okay, we know that we can paint this, we can cover it up, we can do a lot of things to it. So uh, when I saw the price of it, I was like, how can I leave this behind, really? Okay, the original price, which I don't think you can, you'll be able to see on this little tag, but take my word for it, it was $34.99. And I got it for, I don't know if you can see it, $1.99. There's nothing wrong with it, as far as you know, chips or, or scratches or anything. So I uh, I didn't even see the, the original price in the store. I was looking at the tag, but because it's so tiny on the bottom, I missed it. And um, when I got home, I looked at the receipt and the receipt rang up $34.99 minus whatever for it, it to be charged $1.99. So that was a score. Okay, then I went to Needleworkers with my friend Alva. And I picked up, because I saw this finished by Dina, half, half stitch, cross stitch. And it is Quaker Christmas, two songs of the season. And I loved it then, and I love it now. So I got it. And they were having a sale, actually. Um, so I was able to take advantage of that. Then I picked up this one. And then I watched Married Married with Stitches, uh, Christian and Derek. And Derek is working on the Gentleman's Quaker. And I picked up, which I didn't know at the time, the Ladies Quaker. And I picked this up because I had stitched Marquis by Jardin Privé. And actually it's, it's hanging on the wall here and I should have taken it down and I don't wanna have you wait while I do that. So hopefully I'll show that in the next um, video. And um, I thought it would be a nice accompaniment. And then when I saw him doing the gentleman, I said, oh, maybe that would be nice after this one. <laughs> so I was excited um, that I found that. And then I had ordered this and this, I did not realize it was as large as it is. And that's the, um, it's the Needles Notion, and it's called a fine pair. And I had seen this um, stocking, and I thought, oh, how cute. I thought it was small. Um, but the mitten count is 90 wide by 133. Uh, so I think I will eventually stitch it. And maybe I'll try something different fabric-wise. And what I found this time was I wanted to try because I bought some 20 count Ada and it's a little stiff and but I heard somebody mention 20 count Lugana so I I searched on the they have a table full of fabric and I searched and I found the section of 30 count uh, 20 count um, Lugana and I said let me try it so I got three different colors. I got light ash gray, I got a cream, and I bought ivory. And I thought, let's see, can better on this side because of the light. And they're they're soft. They're soft. So I think I'm and they're a, a thicker fabric. I don't know, it feels thicker to me, but I like it. I like the feel of it, so hopefully um, I'll like stitching on it. Then I found, um, they, he, he had very small selection of Lady Dot products, but I did find this Robin Blue, um, oh, what do you call this stuff? <laughs> Trim in, um, it's called Robin's Egg. And I forgot what it's actually called, those little balls. And then some Rick Rack in Bear, Cold Bear. And I used this on the um, the pillow, the um, Redbird pillow. I picked up some Presencia. These are 12 count threads. And I got two in that color and one black. 
and this color Two fifty-six. I think it's two fifty-six. It's so hard. You have to like look inside, and it's in the back of these. It doesn't tell you in the front. It just shows you the color. Maybe it is. Maybe it's really, really tiny, and I just can't see it. But then I saw that he he was carrying um, some one hundred three silks, um, Overa Soie one hundred threes. They're called, and I just. I didn't have a pattern in mind, but I just picked up some colors that I thought I can try them out with. So I have a red and a brown, and then I got two greens and a black. Um, so I thought I, I'd um, find a little piece that I can try them on as well. I don't know when I'm going to fit in all these, trying this and trying that, but that's the plan. Okay, that's it for this month, for this time period. <laughs> I'll be back at the end of the month. I will um, have hopefully a finish or two to show you and some sti stitching on my whips. And then uh, March 1st, I'll have, I think I'm starting four starts in March. I know definitely three. So um, I hope you come back and join me for that. And until next time, stay safe, happy stitching, take it. Bye.